I mean, I, I'm not saying I trust him. I'm, sa I'm saying that yeah, I, I was just it, it could also be that the, the, the example that the, the whole town is just a mystery. We are missing the example, but we are. Uh -huh. It looks like a very credible statement. It's the kind of thing that you read in, in an aspect that's so okay. it's probably true. Okay, but I have uh, uh, some questions about uh, last time. So, because unfortunately the audio was not uh, good. I mean, I could hear only some words. So, let me try to uh, check out with you what you did. So, essentially you were discussing uh, Discussing a case, uh, the A2 type, A2 case, that you divided in subcases according to conjugacy class type, right? That's what you did. And then you stated a proposition, right? The proposition about. That was in general. The proposition was in general, indeed. Huh. But you didn't, I mean, you proved it, but not everything of this proposition, right? No, because we were uh, the time ran out. No, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yes, I, I just wanted to know. But because in the very end, you made a remark about the Hydra group. So it, for me, it was uh, like uh, not clear because the proof didn't look like it was over. And then you started it, about it something was, else. It was not over. I was saying that it doesn't make sense to continue for the last 10 minutes. So I wanted to make this uh, remark. But, uh, ah, because yes, we were short of time. We, yes, but I couldn't hear very well. Yeah, so this was a side remark about uh, the Hydra group. Yes, but, but why is it important this remark? Because it seems kind of uh, away from everything. It's uh, it's not. I mean, it's uh, <coughs> it's related to calculating uh, things explicitly. I this see. Means so that if uh, if you want to calculate uh, this okay. uh, decomposition and orthogonal uh, ah. uh, direct sum of uh, H, H uh, uh, I's, and this is uh, essentially just uh, the decomposition of uh, of the Cartan. Uh, uh, Subalgebra is a module for a, for a certain dihedral group, which comes from this decomposition. Okay, but now I understand that this thing could be ignored. It's not in any way part of the proposition. It's not part of the proposition. Okay, no, no, it's it, clear. It is an explanation for, for why you cannot write on... Uh, I'm happy. I just, uh, you know, I couldn't hear very well. And then suddenly there was a change in subject before the proof was over. So I was like, is it going to help in the proof? I couldn't understand. Okay, happy. And there was also this mistake I made with the uh, type A2. But this was the example, right? Yes. This in the example. Which was a silly mistake because actually we discussed that the length has to be three, so it was clear that it has to be the long root, so so you don't run into it. so there is only one choice to no, okay, but the example doesn't worry me. No. The statements are like uh, Yes. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to get a, an answer from the last time. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, is there a piece of chalk in that? Yeah. There are many. You what, then this book, or? I put. Oh, they're just here. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. I put. Okay. Good. <coughs> okay. Fabrizio, we miss you. Well, very, very, he's, he's not ill. He's ah, Fabrizio is not well. Ah, that's a shame. So this is the reason why. But don't worry, we will not put it on the web. It will be given just to Fabrizio. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no I'm problem. just. Uh, no, I'm telling you, it's not. It's just okay. for him. Okay. Good. You're not going to become famous. Very famous. No. Just stop. Yeah. I got 1,000 1, visualizations <laughs> you see, for my lecture on uh, the exponential of matrix. So if you yeah. want to become more famous, we can put it on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, yes, you know, yes. I use all the Be books careful or? with that. Yeah, Do you think sure. it's okay? Shall I put it somewhere else? Yeah. You're, you're happy? Yeah, that's okay. fine. Um, sh shall I use all of the boards or just. Uh, yeah, maybe the, the, the three. The three. Well, maybe okay. Even, even, okay, the three, yeah. I think, is fine. Okay, that's fine. So, <coughs> so recall that we have this um, central subalgebra. The quantum group. This is where all the mischief comes from. And uh, bridge homomorphism eta from. This, uh, what can I call this? Is, uh, is this called the P-Center or what do you Whatever. call it? L-Center, I call it L-Center. The L-Center, okay. But the course of the is the M-Center. Okay, for the M-Center. Okay, so if we have a homomorphism from the M-Center, then... Uh, so this is a character, right? I mean, this is the right, infinitesimal yeah. character. Yeah. Uh, so the, the objects of interest are these guys here. The central reductions with respect to the kernels of the uh, M central characters. And proposition 8.5 is the first proposition in section 8. But uh, I think you forgot to reset its counter, so it's 
and it says that the algebra is uh, u theta g, and also these things u theta m, which we've been discussing, are Frobenius algebras. Okay, so um, today we need to find Frobenius algebras. and discuss the proof. So I wanted to give the proof, but all I can do is discuss it because... So this M minus is the subalgebra generated by this crazy interval, right? Yeah, okay. exactly. These are the generated by Fi. Right. Okay. And so these two parts will make up uh, the two sections today. So we'll start with section one. Um, all of this is very concrete and it comes basically from Curtis and Reiner, um, uh, the references in Free Leonard and Parsh. <coughs> so we have a finite dimensional unitary associative algebra. <coughs> uh, over C. So this actually works over any field, but I'll just say the complex numbers for convenience. Um, and A is uh, left and right a module in the obvious way and I just denote those two things by uh, two different lower scripts like that. If M is a C vector space usual notation, n star is just the C linear homomorphisms from M to C. Um, if M is a right, I mean, it's just saying, so there's a matter of notation. Uh, if you have something from M star and something from M, then obviously you can obtain something in the field. And I'm going to say <coughs> that uh, my evaluation map is and like this, so phi of m is actually going to be denoted using this. This notation is easier to talk about the module structure on m and m star, so I'll just <clears throat> okay. So, oh, is a C vector space you mean? Okay. Yeah, C vector space. Okay. Okay. So this is the notation I'm using for evaluation. Um, and is on the right. And M star is left in the So um, the way that we define this left module structure is we have A dot by. So in order to decide what a dot phi is, I just have to tell you how it evaluates with any element of m. It's just like this. Okay. So I think this sets up all the notation I need for the first theorem. It's the, it's the only theorem of the section, which is the, the characterization of Frobenius algebras. So it gives you a few equivalent definitions. And you need to know all of them in order to see what uh, Sebastian is trying to do with the proof of the proposition. So this theorem is lifted straight out of Curtis and Reiner. It says the following properties are equivalent. So first of all, the left A module A has more effect to the dual of the right A module. This is left A module. Secondly, there exists a bilinear, C bilinear form. Uh, 
which is associative. So associative means uh, B A B C is equal to B A B C. I should probably say that the bilinear form A plus A into C. Um, and it also has to be non degenerate. So non degenerate just says that if you have B A A equals zero or B A equals zero. So if you have something in the radical, then it must be zero. Um, Equivalently, you can view B as a matrix and just ask for the determinant to be zero. Uh, and then the third condition. Evaluation is uh, morphism, right? Um, evaluation uh, takes um, something from M and something from N star and it, up, and it gives you something from no, C. No, no, but uh, this is, is morphism of A, star, A, A to C, right? No? Yeah, sorry, this yeah. Is, yeah. So if it contains a left ideal, it contains also a two sided ideal, doesn't it? Because care is a two sided idea. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, because you can look at the two-sided yeah, ideas. So by why did you change uh, non-trivial to sided? I mean, no. I, I, yeah, no, it's equivalent. Sorry, I, I, that didn't occur to no, me. No, I, I, yeah. I wonder yeah. if there was a reason. No. No, no. It's, okay. Uh, you're right. It's all equivalent. So two-sided, left Just, or right or anything. Yeah. Sometimes I ask because I miss things. That's all. Not because I want to prove I'm clever, which I'm not. So <laughs> no, this is the statement <laughs> we should remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so an algebra with all of these is called Frobenius. And uh, I'll give you the proof. Ah, interesting. So um, the proof is going to go 1 implies 2, 2 implies 1, 2 implies 3, 3 implies 2. So we'll start. Um, suppose that we're given an isomorphism between these two modules. So we're assuming that one holds. <coughs> and then we define a bilinear form, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. then I say, first of all, we have. So I'm going to give you an equation. Um, phi of BC A. So we're just taking generic elements A, B, and C in our algebra. <coughs> well, because this is an isomorphism, in particular it's a homomorphism, so we can pull the B out to the front. Uh, so I think it's B, A, B, C, A. Okay. And then the definition of um, the action on the dual of A uh, just tells us that this is the same as phi C, sorry, phi to C, A, B. Okay. So that's a question that we use the moment.
Um, okay, now we can define the form. So, you know, this thing takes A to B into the evaluation, C to B and A. First, I'll show you it's um, associative. So, let's take B of A, B, C. Uh, well, this, by definition, is equal to the evaluation of C to C and A, B. And then using star, which I write down there, this is just the same as B to B, C, A to A. And then again, just by the definition of B, I have a question. Why do we? I, I don't understand that. Why do we need to make a distinction between A and I C? I see A as a left module, A as a right module, because you need to consider only multiplication with respect of one of the two. Mm. Okay. Yeah, they give you two different module structures. One is a left and one is a right. But then, but then after taking the dual, they're both left modules. And they could be different. There are lots, lots of algebras where these are not sets anymore. So, oh, I see. I see. You are considering that isomorphic not as algebras, just as modules. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, I was moving the camera. I missed this. Yeah. OK, it's a module. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So this is isomorphic a module. Yeah. Um, Okay, so this is a conceptual associative. And then non degenerate, you can imagine, is just going to follow straight from the, the fact that it's a nice class. So, so if we do have B of A, A is a zero. So for each theta, we have that. So, for, so it's they say arbitrary. Isomorphism. You assume that they are isomorphic. You no, 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 no. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So you have an Yeah, but uh, the, what oh, bothers me is that for each different isomorphism, you get a different Bellina form in yeah. principle, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, but they are. Uh, so can they really be different, these uh, forms? Can, yeah, I mean. No, they don't have uh, one to be the multiple of the others. They really have to be different. Oh, yeah. Uh, in that case, I'm not sure. Probably, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, just... in, the, in the case of uh, Lie algebras. No, the Lie algebra is clear. In Lie, in Lie algebras, it's okay, but it, actually, if you take a semi simple Lie algebra, then you can yes. affect by different scalars on the different parts. It is true. Parts no, and... thank you. I understand. So it yeah. can be really different, yeah. this form. Um, so, uh, because the tautological pairing between A and A star is uh, non degenerate, you conclude from this uh, that A must be zero. the properties we want, uh, we define beta from A to A star by A goes to the linear map which takes B into the form B and A. If B to A equals zero, then that uh, e a a equals zero and a equals zero by non degeneracy. Um, 
and because A and A star are finite dimensional and they have the same dimension, uh, so theta is an isomorphism of vector spaces at least. Mm -hmm. So now we just have to check that it's uh, a modular isomorphism. So, <coughs> We can say the following. So in theta A B evaluated C um, the definition of C uh, of B B C A B. So this is by the associativity of the form. And then take the definition again as B to B. <coughs> A C, uh, is that right? To be C A. Okay, and then this, by the definition of the action on the dual space, is just uh, A B to B C. found out that theta a, b minus a, theta b. So in particular, one does not have to go to one, right? Uh, well, no, because one doesn't mean anything necessarily in the dual space. Um, one goes to something special, though, I think. What, I mean, I think one should be sent to this uh, special one form, which is indicated in the third part of the theorem. Yeah. No, because my, my question was about the module structure, because since you're concerned only about module structure, if your algebra is uni, unical, right, uh -huh. then one is not prescribed to go anywhere. But you say uh -huh. it will go to some special place anyway. It will, yeah. Ah. But, it, but it goes to a one form, because the, uh, the image is the dual space of the You will use and, that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that comes up in the, in the two is equivalent to three part. Um, so uh, this calculation shows that this evaluates as zero on all of A, uh, and in particular these two things are equal. So A theta B. <coughs> so this means that theta is probably a module homomorphism. Um, so I think now one follows. Okay. I do two and plus three. Same sort of routine, but given a form C and define phi in A star by phi of A is equal to B A1. So, yeah, I think if you compare this to the definition of the form that was given in the previous part of the proof, then you'll see that this is actually B. Phi is actually the image of one. Okay. And uh, I mean, if there was a left or right or two-sided ideal, then there would definitely be a principal ideal. And so uh, we may assume that this uh, one form evaluates a zero on this thing here, um, and this implies. Uh, a A one and this uh, zero or equivalently so this tells us that A is zero. Okay. So uh, this tells you that there's no non-trivial principal right ideal and uh, so the kernel of theta contains no non-trivial principal left ideals. So I think that tells us three rules. 
So why are they called Frobenius? Um, I think they were first studied by Frobenius. Ah, but okay. But most of this theory was worked out by Nakayama. Okay, no, because it's a strange name. Second section, um, I'll just give you one fact which is the first time I've cited in the paper and seems to be quite important about Frobenius algebras. So, if M is an A module, um, so A is a Frobenius algebra, then M projective is equivalent to. And being injected. And I think the idea is that uh, if it's Frobenius, then the left regular and the dual of the right regular are isomorphic. And well, uh, the left regular is sort of the prototypical um, projective module for A. And if you um, dualize the right regular, well, this should definitely be an injective module. So the prototypical projective becomes an injective, and I think it follows then from the fact that direct sums and direct summons of um, injective modules are injective. Um, but the, the proof is given in full in Curtis and Reiner, 6.11. Okay. So, so, what is prototype for these algebras? For example, if A is commutative, I don't see it can satisfy this, right? Uh, if A is commutative, then, Are there uh, commutative Frobenius? Maybe not. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, well, if you have uh, a direct product of fields, huh? a direct product of fields would be. I think that's probably. I didn't get you. I'm sorry. Sorry. A, a direct product of fields will definitely be Frobenius. Um, okay. Uh, but apart from that, I don't know whether. I mean, no, no. I'm talking something. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Of course, a field is a commutative algebra, but I was thinking, you know, something more exciting, like. Well, it would have to be finite dimensional, and if it's ah, not it would have to be finite. Yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah. So ah, it's I forgot this. Fields, it has a finite radical, dimensional, yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. So I think if it has a nil radical, then it's probably not Frobenius. Right. So it has to be. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So those are probably the only examples. Hmm. But for non-commutative, there are many, right? Yeah. So what are we going to apply this to? Um, well, uh, Sebastian, in his proof of the last theorem, he needs the fact that uh, the left regular of A is isomorphic to the, the dual of the right regular. Yeah, but what is, uh, is A? A is going to be U e to M minus. Uh -huh. So for him, the most important is U e to M minus. He proves it for U e to G as well, but uh, I don't think he uses that later in the paper. But you, you epsilon g. Oh, maybe in section ten. Yeah. But you epsilon g is not finite dimensional, is it? No, but you e to g. E to g, yes, yeah. of course, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So he wants, yeah. So he just needs that one fact that these two modules are isomorphic, and and. Uh, so the mistake you mentioned uh, was about the proof of what algebra. Uh, the problem occurs for both. 
So ah. the, the, the proof that he gives, so even if the proof works for u e to g, um, if he can find, if you, so I have a problem with his proof. If you can find a way of modifying the proof so that the argument works, then, uh, the, then the argument that he then gives for u to m just the definitely doesn't work. He says that the restriction of the form is non-degenerate. Now, it's not non-degenerate, it's zero. It's, <laughs> it's zero everywhere. Maybe, maybe it meaning something else. I think he meant something else, yeah. Right. And Yuli and I thought about it. Maybe he means that you apply the same construction, but starting with just the algebra u e to m. And you can do this, but you encounter the same problems with the proof. So I can't show that it's not true, but I... Yeah. What did he say? Did you write to him? No, no. no I, we only saw this yesterday. Ah, ah recent things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The problem with the grade, the degrees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, loro sarebbero più di più, no? Che per vedere di una qui, capiamo. Sì, sì, però per vedere una qui, capiamo. Che ti permette di più, non è più di più. Eh, una sensazione. Adesso vedi, qualcuno potrebbe dire, ma mi aspettavo più, no? Mi aspettavo che questa strada portasse, senza esporsi, insomma. No, vuol dire che la... Il fatto della sua è molto naturale, sì. Infatti si diceva con Polizia che voleva scrivere che dobbiamo fare con Sì, che dobbiamo fare le due cose, che ci sono perfettamente d'accordo, ma non fare di altro, siccome si può fare le due cose, non importa. No, ma siccome appunto si era più in merito, si diceva che non ci è, e per me da più, così se non fa la cultura non è una... No, ma si diceva, vabbè come volete, però penso che abbia anche più le competenze. Sì. Come dice un corollario del nostro mondo. Vabbè, ne parliamo dopo. Se no Fabrizio sente, mi sentivo cacchierare io. Dicevamo questo. Such that, yeah. It is just a point. Such that B is here. Such that determined to be uh, is in Z cross, so it's a unit here. Yeah. So the idea is that uh, well, he, he took his proof kind of word for word from a paper by Friedlander and Parshall, um, and they proved this for the, um, the reduced enveloping algebras, coming from the enveloping algebras of restrictedly algebras. Um, and they realized that, uh, well, they didn't, they didn't separate it into a lemma like this, but this is essentially what they were, the idea that they were using, and I think it's useful to just distill it into something more abstract. Um, they, they showed that if you have these conditions, then really <clears throat> these bilinear forms, which make all these things provenious, can be glued together into one big bilinear form upstairs, uh, and it's actually a Z bilinear form. <clears throat> so the existence of this thing up here actually implies that all of the, the quotients by the, <clears throat> by the mm. kernels of characters are provenious algebras. So I'll, I'll give you the proof of this. Mm -hmm. um, but this will not apply to our case because uh, u epsilon g is not a finite, right? It's a finite modulo over z. Oh, oh, it's a finite. I, I thought you meant finite dimensional. No, no, it's finite over z. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought finite dimensional and free over z. No, it's a finite over z. <laughs> oh, I see, yeah. Free. Okay. Yeah. So right. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. get this. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is the, this is the same lemma that 
you might use in the case of the algebras as well. Um, so if you have two things in this algebra u, uh, then you might write x, y bar, the images in uh, uv, so let's assume that I fix the meter just for the course of the proof. And we need to define a form on u eta, so I'll call it b eta. <coughs> and it just takes x bar and y bar, and it sends them to eta with b x y. So there are just three things to check. Um, first of all, I'm taking this uh, this map and I'm, I'm taking elements of conjugacy classes, but I'm defining it on representatives, so I need to check that it's well defined. Uh, and then I just need to check the associative and non-degenerate. So, well defined. So, we suppose x is zero. So in other words, we can suppose that x is equal to the sum of zi ui. Let's take a finite sum, that is zi are in the kernel of theta, and ui and u. So this is precisely the same as saying that x bar is zero. <coughs> it solves every representative of x bar. Um, then say eta of b x y is equal to. You can take these pieces out of the sum, so I get the direct sum, and then I get the sum um, of eta. Zi, B, Ui, Y. So this is just by the Z linearity. But these things are all in the kernel, so they go to zero. And this thing is zero. Okay, so this is well defined. That's all really nice and concrete. And now it gets a little bit more messy. So we recall that 
u e to g is generated by certain elements f i l j p i, where i runs from 1 to d, and j runs from 1 to l. So these were introduced in um, section 5.4 in Sebastian's paper. So I'm going to write down um, a basis for u e epsilon g over z naught. Okay, so we take a sort of string of indices with <clears throat> zero is less than or equal to ri sj pi is less than n. We write xi so xi is equal to f1 to the r1 to t to the r2. That way. Sorry? Oh, oh, okay. So I can't read R1 to RD, S1 to SL, and T1 to TD. Okay. I just could not read. Yes, sometimes I think. Okay. I think I used L. Ah, little L prime. And then the root of unity we always use. So I mean, is your what is M, uh, epsilon is, is an mth root of unity, right? Okay. And L is the rank of the Lie algebra G, yeah. in, as in u epsilon G. Yeah. Yes. So what is the rank of, of the Lie algebra G? Right. We started L. U L G. is the rank. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? It's not a good idea to call it L because you have L J there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I've got little L's and big L's, and worse still. Look, oh, this is a I've little L. L. <laughs> this is a little L, that one. Yeah. J1, oh, little L. Oh, no, it's better than Is it okay? I, I took the notation straight from this paper, so I, I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, so, okay. um, so, I think these guys here, uh, I, can, I can probably write U epsilon G, is equal to the sum of the i uh, of z of xi. Okay, and this is a, I suppose I could say this is a direct sum. I think that's okay. Uh, and whenever I take sums over uh, indices just i, then I'm going to assume that they fulfill these conditions here. So my, my i's will always have this constraint. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, uh, I need one other thing, so I'm going to consider the, the highest possible index i, which is called p, and this is the one that just has m minus 1 in every single entry. Now I can start to define the, uh, the z naught linear form. One of these basis vectors, and it outputs one or zero, depending on whether 